Uh, first of all, can I thank Deputy Connolly for her timely and extremely comprehensive motion on a new vision for transport in Galway and other areas. And um, I was very happy to sign this motion. And while the proposals put forward in the motion here today largely relate to Galway City and Galway County, nonetheless, many of these proposals can, in principle, be applied to uh, other areas throughout the country. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about this motion, that in principle, these uh, proposals can be applied at, at a national level. Now, this motion is timely because it's in the shadow of COP27, where we all heard the stark warnings of being on the highway to hell with our foot on the accelerator. Well, many of the proposals in this motion could allow us to take our foot off the accelerator and to use public transport instead of continuing with our car dependent ways. However, for this to happen, public transport must be accessible. Now, accessible means that it's um, accessible in terms of availability. There must be sufficient bus routes, reliable bus routes for people to use. And Minister, you will be aware that while things have improved, that was a very significant concern for many people over the last few months, that buses didn't always turn up. Somebody going to work, somebody coming from work early in the morning, late at night, going for appointments, literally whatever it is, going about their daily business, they have to be able to rely on public transport. Because especially in rural areas, Minister, it's not the situation that if you miss one bus, there will be another one coming, or if one bus doesn't turn up, there will be another one arriving within 10, 15, 20 minutes. That's not the case. If very often you'll have to wait maybe two to three hours uh, for another bus to arrive. So if those buses don't turn up for whatever reason, because it makes little difference when you're standing at the bus stop, if those buses don't turn up, well then the truth is people will simply stop using public transport. But accessibility isn't just in terms of availability, it's also uh, accessibility in terms of cost. And I do recognise that efforts have been made to decrease the cost of public transport, and I would be fully supportive of that. But accessibility is also about universal accessibility, and that, of course, includes all persons with a disability. And sometimes when we think of disability, we just think of somebody perhaps in a wheelchair. But disability is much wider than that. And as our population ages, more and more people will have some form of disability. So it's really important that our public transport fleet is designed in such a way that it caters for all levels of disability. Um, so that's sort of bottom line stuff, as it were. Now, coming back to this motion here, uh, one of the proposals that I was very interested to see is the recognition that Galway City has launched an application to be the European, sorry, to the European Commission to become a net zero pilot city. And if it were successful, it would receive funding to implement innovative approaches to carbon reduction over a two-year pilot programme. Now, as I said, this net zero pilot city uh, is an EU initiative. And I hope that other cities across Ireland have applied to join this initiative, because this would allow local authorities to try out different approaches and to put alternative strategies in place and to see what works best, because not everything will be 100% successful. That's what innovation is, that we try out to see what's best for your city uh, for your town. And this kind of proposal or initiative 
gives local authorities a degree of flexibility to see do certain proposals work well in their city. And it's a great opportunity, as I said, uh, for other Irish cities uh, to, to try this approach. And I sincerely hope that many others have applied to join this initiative. I am also pleased to see that this motion reiterates the fact that a key message from the OECD report is that uh, refocusing efforts towards transformative policies is not restricted to urban areas because one third of Ireland's population is rural. And Minister, you and we are all aware that more and more people are moving out of the larger cities. It's not just the, the trend of, of working from home, but it's also the fact that the cost of living in our cities is becoming prohibitive. And that means rural transport services must serve all of those rural areas. And I am pleased to say, Minister, that I can see a real start in providing rural transport in parts, parts of County Leitrim and County Sligo. It is a good start and many people are happy to see that and it, it refocuses how people think. But I look forward to seeing a further role out of these services because you spoke about balanced regional development and that's, that's a crucial part of a balance of development across regions. People have to be able to get from A to B and reliable, accessible and affordable uh, public transport is very much, as it were, part of that package. Now, in that context, Minister, um, when I have the floor and you're sitting here in front of me, I want to specifically speak about a new role that is being, sorry, a new route that is being rolled out in Sligo. And Minister, I'm referring here to what we would have called the old S3 route, and it's now called the 981 route. But it's from Kulani in Sligo, uh, through Sligo Town, uh, to St Angela's College. Now, I have contacted you on a number of occasions about this and asked that an area of Sligo Town, uh, Maharaboy, would be included on this route. Now, when the route itself was announced, the press release included Maharaboy, but now that does not seem to be the case. And I don't know why, if you like, it's, it's no longer included. Uh, I believe just this morning I received a response from a PQ that I put down to your office about this issue, and um, you tell me that you have referred it to the NTA. Now, Minister, for, I don't know how well you know Sligo Town, but you don't need to know it well to know that if there is one area, one section of the town that is not served by public transport, that that's a major issue for people. And I know that there is huge disappointment in the Maharaboy area that this part of the town is left without a bus service. Um, and, you know, while I accept that your response to me said you were referring this matter to the NTA, I would strongly ask you that, that you would ask the question, at least as to why, so that the NTA would be fully aware of the level of disappointment. And even at this late stage, that there might possibly be some minor change in the route, because that's all that's needed. We're not talking about major changes here. And any change that would be made uh, would not discommode other areas. So I believe we have a relatively simple solution here. And if there are challenges on this, and if there are reasons uh, why uh, this uh, bus route is not serving the community in Maharaboy. I would like to know why this is so and what will be done to ensure that this community is fully serviced. So I'm asking for your help on this minister and I will be in contact with you again. Finally, minister, um, you mentioned the Western Rail Corridor and um, 
that you mentioned that this corridor was to go from Ballina to Waterford. Uh, you didn't mention Sligo, so I'm, I'm not sure what's, what's in your mind, um, but perhaps you might clarify that for me, because it was always, uh, to my knowledge at least, that Sligo was very much included in the Western Rail Corridor, and I think uh, people may be surprised and disappointed if that's not the case, but I suspect it probably is, and perhaps you might be able to clarify that for me. Thanks, Minister.